life is full of myths, like we can't swim after eating, or if we sneeze with our eyes open, they'll pop out of our heads. We all know that these things aren't true, but as students, there are things that we need to know, and things that we think we know, but they turn out to be false. Hello Kathleen, my name is Matthew Yule, and today I'm a Mythbuster, and along with my team, we'll be solving myths about science, college, and life. So, let's get to it. There's so much about life that we're just not sure of. We don't know what job we're gonna have, what opportunities that might come our way, and we don't know who we're gonna marry. But one thing's for certain is what's gonna happen after high school. And if college is in your future, then you've probably heard some stuff that's just not true. Tatiana's gonna continue our myth-busting show by showing you what you should and shouldn't believe about college. What happens after high school? If you say at college, you better be prepared. But how? Because a lot of the stuff that you have heard about higher education could be a myth. Good morning, Kathleen. I'm Tatiana Houston, and I'm here on this beautiful campus of Southeastern University in Lakeland, Florida, where I'll be busting some myths about college. Myth one, most students graduate in four years. You may think that the college journey only takes four years. However, more than 58% of college students take six or more years to graduate. Several studies done over the years indicates that most students take about five years to graduate and that only 36% of college students graduate on time. Myth two, the school is more important than the degree. While it may be true that some schools are more prestigious than others, what is also true is that it's not always worth going into debt because you don't want to go to a community college. The degree you earn oftentimes matters more than the school where you earned it with the cost of higher education continuing to rise. It's a smart idea to bust this myth before it busts your budget. Myth three, a low ACT or SAT score will destroy your chances of getting into college. Colleges know that your test scores is just one piece of the puzzle that makes your application. Even though a high ACT or SAT score can help, what colleges put more weight on is your rank and your course rigor in high school. Myth four, no money means no college. You may have heard about the cost of college and think it's impossible to pay for, but there are many financial aid opportunities available. In fact, 40% of the ungraduated college students qualify for the Pell Grant, which are the federal grants reserved for the most needy students, and about 25 to 58% of the students receive school grants that offset the cost of college. The prospect of college can be overwhelming, but now that we've busted some common myths, hopefully you look at college differently and know that if you want it, you can achieve it. I'm Tatiana Houston reporting for Ignition TV. Now, to bust a myth, you can't just say it's not true, and you can't just try it one time and determine that nothing about it is true. It takes patience, practice, and it takes a method. Specifically, it takes the scientific method. That's where you take something you think you know and try to see if it's right or wrong. For more about this, here's Paige. In a world full of molecular components that tend to go beyond our comprehension, we tend to believe in myths, also known as pseudoscience. In order to discover what is real and not real, scientists use a method called the scientific method. This method helps to provide evidence on whether or not an experiment is factual or infactual. I'm Paige Lilly, and let's float on into this experiment. The scientific method is a method of procedure with steps that include observance, questioning, research, hypothesizing, experimentation, testing your hypothesis, concluding, and reporting your final answers. You might be wondering how does the experiment correlate with our ocean and marine life? Salinity can affect the density of ocean water, water that has higher salinity and is denser and heavier and will sink underneath less saline, warmer water. This can affect the movement of ocean currents. It can also affect marine life, which may need to regulate its intake of salt water along with movement adjustment due to the change in the buoyancy. When the northern Antarctic ice melts, it dilutes the ocean's salinity, causing not as much salt into the ocean water. Thank you for tuning in. We gathered factual evidence by using the scientific method, which helped us in discovering salinity differences that could change the buoyancy and affect our environment. I'm Paige Lilly, reporting for Ignition TV. Future juniors and seniors, 
Hurry up and sign up for your electives before it's too late. You can go and register online or you can see your guidance counselor. FCA is having a movie night here at the Kathleen football field, February 12th at 7 p.m. Don't miss it. Grad Bash is coming up, so hurry up and grab your tickets. They're on sale for $100 until March 8th. But before that, you have to complete all of your obligations. The Trident crew is looking for selfies from you at Disneyland, with your pets, at work, and much more. You've already seen a couple of my Mythbusters take on commonly held beliefs and completely destroy them. Now it's time to see what you've learned. Let's see if you know the facts from the fakes. Bailey went out to talk to some of you about some commonly held beliefs to see if you know if they're just hard facts or if they're myths that should be busted. Did you know that we only use 10% of our brain? I'm Bailey Hawthorne, and did you also know that that is completely untrue? Many common beliefs are actually common myths, and I'm here to put my fellow students to the test of fact or fiction. I don't think dogs are colorblind, because we see in color, why can't they see in color? I do believe dogs are colorblind because my dog cannot tell the difference between my food and her food. Dogs aren't colorblind. They actually see a variety of blues, yellows, and grays. No, I do not think that touching a baby bird will make the mother abandon it because I've never seen it happen. <laughs> yes, handling baby birds will let the mom abandon it. Touching baby birds won't make their mother abandon it. Birds have a limited sense of smell, but I still wouldn't recommend handling baby birds. No, swimming after eating would not give you cramps, in my opinion. Yes, I do think that swimming after you have eaten before 30 minutes, it does give you cramps. Swimming after eating doesn't make you sick, but a full stomach can make you short of breath. Clearly, it's very easy to trick people into believing things that aren't even true. It just goes to show that you can't believe everything you hear to be correct. I'm Bailey Hawthorne, reporting for Edition TV. Throughout the show, we've tested your knowledge on commonly known myths, we've shown you what you should and shouldn't believe about college, and we've given you the tools necessary to use the scientific method to go out there and solve your own myths. Never take anything face value. I'm Matthew Yule, signing off for Ignition TV. Let's go blow something up.